December 29th, 1887. The stalagmites loom in the distance like the cranes on Woolstack docks, but faster, faster. The net, the law, the harm, the sky, the light, the clock, the Z, the I, the night. Leave me. Leave me now. I have things to do. You have gained one fragment. The favours is increasing with the antiquitarians. We have lost a Syringaninga and we've gained a thousand echoes. We have one thousand five hundred and ninety-one echoes. Wow, what a haul! We're like totally... Like, I knew, I knew that would that would pay off. I knew that the, the, the alarming scholar would not be able to resist uh, throwing cash at me for that. I'm not even sure I need to do these ones. I think I'm going to hold the Z stories because I think they might be useful um, in unlocking things out there on the Untersee. Uh, but with so much money now, look, we can totally upgrade our ship. We could possibly even buy a new ship. Um, what else? Like a Lampad class cutter, for example? Oh no, that costs 3,000 echoes. Uh, alright, maybe not. Maybe not a new ship. Um, just yet. But we can certainly upgrade our existing ship. The Iron and Misery Company. Ah, uh, yes. Engines. Engines for me. What have we got at the moment? I've got a, uh, elderly steeple engine. Engine power, 800. Lead butter and stain rod, Illyrian. Thousand engine power, so it's plus two hundred engine power. The Illyrian is an outdated model, but it'll get you where you need to go. A secure compartment equips to aft. Wow, um, could be useful for the smuggling we're about to do, but I don't think we have an aft slot to put it in. Lead better and stain rod, Bodicea. It's going to cost us a thousand, but it's one thousand five hundred engine power can supply. Although as usual, they've skipped on materials. More power, less subtlety. Does that mean we're just going to go faster? That could that could be really good, actually, for getting out of trouble, uh, and also for kind of getting by if we if we lose half of our crew again. It's a thousand echoes, though. It's like it's like two thirds of our current stash of echoes. We get ten back for selling our elderly steeple engine. I I feel like this is the more efficient purchase. I I think like we'll we'll need to upgrade this. This will last us a lot longer. And then having 500 monies left, buy some supplies and maybe make some runs to the um, to the salt lions and to do some salt lion runs. I think that could be a wise course of action. And maybe to search out that place where we're supposed to be uh, shipping that illegal cargo to. Uh, I mean, smuggling that totally legal cargo. I, I mean, shipping that totally legal cargo. That's what I mean. Totally what I mean. Um, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I've done it. I've bought the Leadbetter and Stainrod Bodicea engine, and we can sell the elderly steeple engine. It is it is no more needed. In it goes, look, there we go. It's it's in, it's fitted, we've got a ton more engine power at our disposal. I think everyone's going to be uh thoroughly impressed by it. And uh, and that's pretty much all we need to do. We're gonna need some supplies. Where's the uh, provisioners? We want some supplies. We kind of nearly ran out of supplies last time. Should we have 341? And, uh... Let's have 300 with 10 fuel. 300 with 11 fuel. Do you think that'll be enough? I kind of feel like maybe I should buy more fuel, but I'm not sure how much coin, how many echoes I need if I go to the Salt Lions to, to buy stuff to ship back up to London. Wolfstack Exchange, do we have anything else that we can sell? We can sell a firkin of Prisoner's Honey for 20. And we can sell sell a bale of parabola linen for sixty. Are these are the things that I bought. Did I buy these things thinking I might be able to flog them at a profit somewhere else? Uh, I, honestly, I don't remember. Cargo. We've got tons of cargo space. We'll just leave them in the cargo hole for now, and we'll see if anything comes up out of them uh, in the future. I, I think that's probably sensible, right? We could buy some mushroom wine or um, coffee beans, uh, crates of human souls. I mean, we could take some crates of human souls. That might make our, our our other crate of human souls less obvious. Should we buy a crate of human souls? Oh, I don't know. I'll buy one crate of human souls. I'm intrigued. 
I've done it. I bought a crate of human souls. We've got 238 echoes left. We're going to keep that. We're going to make sure we're always sailing with money because quite often things require echoes when we're out and about uh, on the Untersee. And so we must plan our onward journey. Having barely made it back to fallen London, we have spent the last period of time carousing in the docks to replenish our crews back to a full 10 men and women. This of course includes the two remainders who managed to survive our last journey. Moreover, the Chipping Norton is fully repaired and has a new engine with almost twice the engine power of the old. We should fairly tear across the sunless seas now. Perhaps slightly less wisely, we have accepted a job from the Blind Bruiser to take a crate of unstamped souls to the east to Mount Palmerston, perhaps? Mount something, for sure. And it is most definitely in the east. As this is of dubious legality, I think we should probably get it over and done with as quickly as possible. And so, without further ado, let us depart fallen London once again and continue on our adventures as our third great voyage begins. Wilberforce Weird and the Chipping Norton set forth. Let's see what this thing can do. Let's open her up to full speed. Let's already look at that. We're just tearing out of Wolfstack docks, leaving a wake behind that would rock all of the smaller boats and vessels nearby. Bad Stevener's Abyss, already beneath our hull and on directly to the east. Let us consult our charts and see if there is anything of interest along the way that we may want to visit. We could stop in again at Station 3 and see if anything has changed. We could perhaps deviate north a little bit and investigate Born Vadas Pillar and the Body Reefs. And then perhaps swing south and investigate Saints Haven and further into the east. Let's do that. We'll swing port, swing to port, and I believe if we turn off our lamp, we may use less fuel. I guess whilst we're close, it's not a bad thing, although our terror will increase. Let's put it back on. <laughs> there we go. The lamp is back on. We've got nine fuel aboard and we've got 13 supplies. A fair amount that should see us safely to the east and back. December 28th, 1887, Shepherd's Wash, the salty hinderland of London, home to hermits, nuns, and shadowy business. Shadowy business that we ourselves are perhaps on. Recurring nightmares, you have begun to dream of a vast eye. It knows you. You cannot evade its gaze. A black, unsleeping taste. Again and again. You are alone on the wide black sea. The eye is aware. Your nightmare will come upon you from time to time, inspiring terror. Gain restful nights at your lodgings to help you resist it. If you defeat it, you may gain a secret. You have begun to suffer nightmares of a vast eye. Oh, chilling. December 29th, 1887. The stalagmites loom in the distance like the cranes on Woolstack docks, but vaster, vaster. The Corsair's forest, our lookouts are watchful. It's, um, look, we've got a light there. Is that from a ship? Or is that a lighthouse? Let's ease up on the engines once it's passed. It looks like it's a lighthouse because it's swinging around again. Is there a dock here? Somewhere? December 29th, 1887. Discovered Patrick's lot. The waves are cluttered with z rex like drowned hair drifting. December 30th, fed the crew and discovered Gator's Moor. I don't see anywhere to make dock here. And there it is. Gator's Morn. 
a mighty pillar of rock thrusting out of the deep. Walkways suspended between. And a dock where we can make our port report, perhaps. Another ship. Presumed hostile. The sooner we're in dock, the better. Corsairs Forest. West. Step carefully. Gators Morn. The Morn is a stalagmite, vast as a crag, and its foot has no safe harbours. The Corsair's citadel nestles halfway up. An intricate system of winches takes the strain, and your ship raises slowly from the sea, her hull creaking in protest. Grizzled sailors groan and cling to stanchions. Higher and higher, now the untersee shimmers like glass below. Children clambering in crevices cheer and wave alarmingly. The winch motor slows, and you hang in a cradle next to a red bowed pirate cutter. An evening at the ardent limpet. A drinking den by the dock cradles. Is it a good place for your crew to find companionship and let off steam? But although Gader's Morn is a free port, the Corsairs prefer their own, and look askance at respectable Londoners. A very chancy challenge. 49% chance of success, though. We can explore the port. Let's do it. We're gonna, we're gonna have an evening at the Arendt. The Arendt Limpet. Unlocked with one terror. Something awaits you. And 50 echoes. We have enough. Let's do it. A rousing evening, nevertheless. Your crew teaches the Limpet a whole cycle of epically filthy sea shanties. At one point, you could swear you hear your name inserted in one of the more complex verses, but you maintain a diplomatic silence. You've lost three Terra, new total zero Serene. We've lost 50 Echoes and we've succeeded in a Veil's challenge. I think that was actually a massive waste of money because we only had three Terra to lose. It was just an opportunity to blow off steam and lose some Terra and it cost us 50 Echoes um, for the sake of three Terra. Regardless, let us move on. Explore the Morn. There's a surprising quantity of actual landscape on the Morn. It's vertical, admittedly, but once you find the beast paths and urchin roads, you can traverse it as you would a rocky moor, with an additional throatful of lurching terror. <laughs> we should have... Oh, well, let's just do it. A contest of riddles. Fisher folk, sailors, a shady couple of likely pirates. And is that a drowny down by the water's edge? They sit round a fire at the Z's edge, passing round a bottle of something viciously back. They're wagering on riddles. Will you join them? Riddles are for children. Bet an echo on one of the simpler riddles. Your page's quality of 33% chance, 16% chance. Attempt one of the riddles of Pearl. 11% chance for a high-risk challenge. Attempt one of the great riddles of Irem. An almost impossible challenge. Um, let's just go for better echo on one of the simpler riddles. We've just started our third great exploration, and we don't want to get ourselves into hot water just yet. A 33% chance of success, hopefully no massive problems if we fail. Let's bet an echo. A cat's shadow. The fisherman grumbles but pays up. You've gained one echo, one whole echo, we've gained ten fragments, we've succeeded in a pages challenge, and that is all for now. Overhear rumours of a pirate poet. Landlubbers fear pirates. Pirates fear the poet. Lies, nonsense, glimmers. Some say she's a clay man who freed herself with the power of verse. Possible. Others insist she's the personal muse of the king with the hundred hearts. Unlikely. One claims she sails on a living ship, made of the still-screaming skulls of her victims. More sober voices mutter that, no, it's just an alucas class vessel. Whatever the truths, few have fought her and survived to tell the tale. Only the bravest of captains risk the lonely parts of the sea where her flag is set to fly. 
Wow. Gather intelligence. Gaiden's Morn swarms with pirates, smugglers, and captains of uncertain allegiance. You could learn a lot here, but you'd need to go carefully. 39% chance of success. Let's give it a go. In caution. A steaming bathhouse on a spur of rock. Water slops over the edge of tubs. Out over the edge to join the Z far below. Scarred captains boast drunkenly of the prizes they've taken and the victims they have marked out. You listen from the shadows. You now have a port report for Gaiden's Morn. And we have succeeded in our Vale's challenge. Hurrah! We have succeeded. This is always good. And we've heard many interesting tales, not to mention spent 50 echoes to remove a small quantity of terror. I think we have seen all there is to see here. Do you have shops? You do have shops. Are they cheap? They are not cheap. The arrant limpet, always eager for wine and honey. Their supply prices are calibrated for corsairs. The friendly face. Of course, you can sell illicit goods here. And of course, you can't expect to get a fair price. We could sell our unstamped crate of brilliant souls for 150 echoes. But the blind bruiser and our patron may not be too pleased with our activities. So perhaps we won't, but if we get into difficulty, at least we know we can return here to sell it. This is good news indeed. Come, crew of the Chipping Norton, we have seen enough of Gator's Morn. Let us continue on our journey. We are going to head south, we're going to try and avoid that ship in case it's horrible to us, and we're going to swing past the Bonnie Reefs and then on south down past Saints Haven, and then into the east proper to see once more. We are the Purple Scythe Mercenary Company and all shall fear us across the land. After years of bloodying your sword for meager pay, you've saved up enough crowns to start your very own mercenary company. Your men look to you to give a command. They live and die for the purple scythe now. The Innerbold only ever had one real talent, using his fish to bloody the noses of other men and not going down no matter what. You there, yeah, you mercenary, over here 